one of the best views of Jerusalem, the old city, is from the top of the Lutheran church. Well over a hundred steps in a winding staircase all the way up. But once you get up there, it's one of the best views of the old city of Jerusalem. How gorgeous. Yeah. I'll let you catch your breath for a second. I brought you up here because I wanted to show you something. Okay. The two blue domes are the top of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. That church sits on the traditional location of where Jesus Christ died, was buried, and arose. The big dome on the left sits on top of the edicule where they said he was buried. Mm -hmm. And the smaller dome on the right sits on top of where they think is Calvary, where he died. What a great perspective, a great view of the old city. It really is. I love coming up here and seeing this. As nice as this view is, yeah. actually there's something I want to show you that's down below the church. Below? Yes. Back down all the stairs? All the stairs. In the basement of this church are a number of things they found archaeologically. The main thing I wanted to show him was the remains of the first century wall of Jerusalem. So Mark tells us that Jesus was led out to be crucified, and then John specifies that he was still near the city. So what do both of those passages have to do with where we're standing? Interestingly enough, where we're standing is outside the city. Now how do we know that? Well behind us is part of the wall from first century Jerusalem. Everything on the other side of this wall would have been inside the city. Everything out would have been outside the city. And the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which we believe is the traditional location of Jesus' crucifixion, would have taken place about 200 feet in that direction. We can imagine people coming through the gate of this wall to access the point in Golgotha where Jesus was crucified. That's correct. Right in front of us, according to what I've been reading, is this shaft that goes down about 40 feet. Back in the early 70s, they did some excavation and they actually hit quarry bedrock from the time of Herod the Great. What can you tell us about the layers in this shaft? Well, you're right. Down at the very bottom, there is a quarry. From the time of King Herod, he used rocks from this quarry to build the walls and the other structures inside the city. Probably another 10 to 12 feet above that is a garden layer that actually dates to the time of Jesus, so about 30 AD. And another 10 or 15 feet above that is a large section of basically residue. It was just a dumping ground during the time of Hadrian around 135 AD. So if we can imagine going back to that second layer, that layer of garden, and imagine it right up against this wall, about this wall extending down another 30, 35 feet, down to that garden layer where Jesus was led out to be crucified. It helps us imagine how large this wall was and how much history has taken place in between now and then. And it was out into that garden layer that Jesus was led to be crucified at Golgotha. What Barry was able to do for us was show us more evidence that helps us understand that our Bible and the descriptions of the crucifixion are accurate. Just in that one stop, Barry was able to point out the traditional crucifixion site of Jesus was outside the city walls. There was also a garden in that same spot, and the Bible talks about both of those things. It makes the Bible come alive to see things like that. I'm Craig. And I'm Stu, and we're the founders of Appian Media. We really hope that you've enjoyed the content that you've just seen. This was only made available through the generous donations of so many of you. We believe that the world should have biblically accurate, visually engaging content about the Bible, and it should be free for everyone. We would encourage you to visit the membership page of appianmedia.org and consider becoming a reoccurring member. Everything that you donate to Appian Media is tax deductible. However you decide to donate, we really appreciate your support.